Okay, I want to point out two things. First of all, did you hear the variability over time of that sound? It's different always. It will continuously vary to the point where it doesn't sound repetitive because it's always different. And that's due to the complexity of the synthesizer. Also, the second thing, uh, that was polyphonic. That was a bass and chords. And that's really important. You can do that with a sequencer, and I'm going to show you how. Um, first of all, let's go over and look at the oscillators. Oscillator 1 is the muted waveform. It's got a shape mod of negative 35, which means it's muted and meh mixed. Um, and then if we go to oscillator 2, we can see it's a pulse wave um, that has been shape mod plus 40, which means it's more of a pulse than a square wave. And 3 and 4 are the same. So basically we have a bass note, which is a different timbre than the three other notes, the three other oscillators, because they provide the chord. So we've recorded a set of notes here on, um, just on the bottom level, the first track of the sequence. And you can see they change. So that's basically our sequencer telling the oscillators what notes to play. But as it's currently set up, that tells the oscillator one to play these notes. But then our tracks are different. So if we go to track two, we can see track two is oscillator two frequency. So oscillator two plays a frequency that varies by a value of 65, whatever arbitrary thing that means. And also oscillator two, has a pitch of C3, whereas oscillator one has C2. So basically, this track varies the oscillator setting by enough to create a different pitch. And it's the same for the rest of the tracks too. Track three is oscillator three's frequency, and we can see that it is a value of 81 which is a different number, and oscillator four, oscillator, or track four, oscillator four's frequency, which is a value of 102. So by changing these outputs, we can control the pitches of the oscillators. So they will be playing um, in the notes that are generated on our first track, but we can alter their pitch and alter when those notes are played by, of course, pressing these buttons. So this polyphonic thing that you heard earlier is created by me taking those three tracks, forcing the notes played to be different pitches, the pitches I want that form these chords. And that's basically what's happening here. But we have a variety of other things going on too. Let's look at the mod section. Okay, we have no modulation going on. Let's look at the LFO section. We have random, LFO one is set to random, one of my favorite settings, 16th note. So every one of these steps is aligned with a change that's happening, a random change that's happening in the random waveform that the LFO is using, uh, amount of 127, so that's a lot. We have a slew rate of four, so these are a little bit rounded. And uh, LFO1 is sent to F2's cutoff. And we're only using F2, uh, which is filter 2. We're only using filter 2 for our filter sound. And the, the cutoff frequency of that is set by this random waveform generated by LFO1 at a 16th note frequency. So basically, we have the note, the bass note, played by track 1. We have the chord formed by tracks two, three, and four as they control the frequency of oscillators two, three, and four. We have our filter, the only filter we're using, controlled by LFO1 sending a random output which changes forever. It's never the same. And that's why we have that variability where it's never the same. The thing I was talking about earlier. We also have a delay going on which is set to eighth notes, which is every other step here. Uh, 127 is the amount, 36 is the feedback, and we have it panned 63 all the way to the right. So this sound um, that we're listening to is a bass note and a three note chord 
varied continually by the second filter, which is the awesome 12 decibel per octave um, Oberheim simulant filter, which is modified uh, 16th note wise randomly, which creates a varying sound. And there's a slight delay. And that constitutes the entirety of this sound. primary reason I wanted to show this one to you is because I really like it. Like those notes are really cool to me. Uh, okay, that's not the primary reason, but it's one of the reasons. Okay, here's what we have going on with this particular sound. First of all, I want to talk about what's happening in the oscillators. Oscillator one is set to gothic and it has church for wave left and nasal for wave right. Oscillator two is set to shrill it has nasal wave left and buzz wave right. Oscillator three is set to O. It has meh wave left and ah wave right. And oscillator four is set to mellow with muted wave left and boing wave right. And what you may not know is these are all very digital waveforms. They are samples, uh, which is weird to be hearing from me in a video. But I wanted to go with these digital choices because we have the ability to uh, move between waveforms, uh, digital waveforms in this synthesizer and the sequencer allows us to do this. So on our first level, we have, of course, sequencer note and we can see the notes that I have chosen, which are pretty cool, I have to say. Um, it's also 32 steps long. And so we can see all of the different notes I've chosen. Um, I don't, do we have... We, uh, we don't have velocity going on, so there's no velocity. Uh, the sequencer is set to restart on and envelope trigger per step off, which is interesting. What would happen if we turn that on? Let's have a listen. Here's what it would have sounded like. Kind of robotic. Anyway, the most important thing about this, the notes are cool, but what I've done here is on track two, track two modulates oscillator one's modulation. And so we can see these shapes I've made using the values. There's a whole bunch of different shapes. And what they are doing is those values are affecting the wave left and wave right. Zero will be the gothic waveform. The lower things go in the sequencer, the more church waveform it will be. The higher things go, the more nasal waveform things will be. So you can see that the waveform is going to be morphing between a variety of digital waveforms to create the, some serious timbral movement in each different oscillator. As you can see, I on sequence track three, we have oscillator two modulation, which again, changes the shrill waveform towards the nasal and towards buzz, depending on what we're doing. This is one through 16. This is 17 through 32. 
you can see how the waveform is being changed vastly with every step. And that is kind of what I've done on every different section of this. And I think on track five, which is oscillator four, I actually just held down record and moved the value by turning the knob, which you can do. Oh, there's nothing going on in the second part. Anyway, so what you have is with each step, each, each oscillator is changing from one complex timbre to another. And that's why we have such an interesting sound going on with this particular sequence. So if we didn't even sequence, here's what the sound sounds like. And I've made it even more complex, and here's how. LFO1 has a triangle wave shape with a frequency of 19 and a slew rate of 4. And again, the destination is shape mod. So I've used all of the LFOs to modulate the shape at different speeds in different ways. So not only is the sequencer changing the wave shape, but the LFO is changing each individual wave shape as well. So with each step in the sequencer, we're getting a totally different waveform for each of the four oscillators. And that is a timbral complexity, which leads to a really pleasing, unique, complex sound. It's more of an acoustics thing than a synthesizer thing. And with this, I, I didn't even do anything with the filter. We didn't have to. We've already got all these cool things going on. Actually, I think I did set the filter to a specific setting. Yeah, I did darken it up a little bit because some of those digital waveforms can be a bit shrill, like the waveform name shrill. Um, as an analog guy, I like to kind of warm them up by cutting off some of those high frequencies. But still, largely what this particular sound is about is modulating the wave shape, uh, morphing digital wave shapes to get a different timbre for each step. And with four different oscillators, you can get some serious diversity. Oh, oh, I hear a thing. I also employed the glide. So let's see here. We have different glide settings for each of the oscillators. So you can hear a little bit of glide going on. But that's basically what this particular sequence is about. And overall, I just want to show you that you have a lot of possibilities for modulation. This sequence can choose to modulate a lot of the different factors, including things I didn't even touch on, like the, the envelope settings, like the release or the attack or the delay settings, like the length of delay. I have not touched on so many different aspects of what the sequencer can control. It's really incredibly powerful. And what you really need to do is experiment. You need to decide how your sound should change over time. And it's there's a level of complexity that I can never possibly show all the things that are possible with the synthesizer. And I like that aspect of it. But you end up with these really cool sounds no matter what you do. And that's one of the strengths of this synthesizer. <laughs> <laughs>